Should we buy or sell the 20-year treasury bond ETF? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by commenting and uh, subscribing. The TLT is here. It's in the uh, bond category, uh, governmental bonds. We are 16% away from the 52-week low, but we are still, you know, at 25% away from the 52-week highs. Here is the long-term chart for the TLT. Uh, we see that historically we are at a pretty low uh, level. Uh, you also see here that this ETF has a bit of a tendency to go into these time cycles, but there's recently been some disruption here in the time cycles, but it is a buy low, sell high kind of ETF. Uh, we have seen a very substantial uh, pullback in the TLT due to the yield, uh, because the, the yield has been going up and they move opposite each other. Um, we do see some consolidation here. Uh, if we go here to the daily data points, uh, the red 200 uh, uh, week, two day, 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 moving average is a resistance level. But we do have some support here from the purple 20 day moving average and also the green 50 day is also very likely to offer support. Another thing is that because the 50 day is moving upwards and the 200 day is moving downwards, we will have a golden cross on the horizon, uh, yeah, most likely. Uh, when we had the death cross here, when the opposite happened, uh, we definitively saw uh, some weakness. And if the opposite is about to happen, then that could be bullish for the TLT. Uh, when these indicators move across each other, they're like this, it, it is a um, long-term signal. But yeah, there's something interesting here happening, uh, looking at um, the weekly uh, RSI PPO. Uh, we are definitively far from being overbought. That is not an issue. Looking at the daily is also, there's no like extreme readings in this case. Uh, that should be like a reason for us to like ha need to have a bit of a break. Oops. Uh, another thing uh, was, which I see here in the, in the chart is that you could make the case that this is a bit of a inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is also a bullish uh, technical pattern. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, I write the entry signal as inverse head and shoulders. Uh, on the technicals, I do give the bulls a four. Uh, they don't get any higher because of that key resistance level that we have to fight, uh, the 200 daily moving average. It will be a bit of a battle, but I thought overall the technicals are promising. You can see here that we were rejected uh, um, on the 2nd of February, but we pulled back to the 20 daily moving average, not, nothing more. So it's um, there's something interesting here, uh, definitively something rather interesting. Okay, looking at the seasonality here to the left, uh, there usually is some additional strength into mid-February, but then we do see that on average there's some pullback into uh, mid-March. Uh, in the table to the right, we so far have a 0.42% loss for February. Uh, February, when you can look here at the sum, it is one of the weaker months. Uh, March is also a relatively red month, a lot of red in March. Uh, so the seasonality here is not uh, particularly favorable. So that, that, that would be a weak point. So on the seasonality, I do give the bears minus three. I can't share the bond analysis tool that I use due to license rules, but uh, a three here to the bulls on the fundamentals. Let's look at some correlations. Long term, we have minus 38% with S&P 500, 99% paw, oh, negative, 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 negative with the TNX, which is the 10 year treasury yield. Uh, very negative, they do move upset each other to a large extent, but you do see it like here in this period, uh, the negative correlation dropped to minus 87%. Of course, it's still very negative, but it's not a perfect uh, relationship, but very strongly negative. Um, with the dollar index minus 73% uh, at the moment, but that is very, it's a record uh, historical negative correlation.
Looking at the daily data points, 54% with S&P 500, 99% negative with 10-year yield, and 35% negative with the dollar index. So what happens with the TNX? The CBOE 10-year Treasury note yield is going to have a very substantial effect on the TLT, in the sense that they do move opposite each other. When it comes to the 10-year yield, you do have some relatively clean time time cycles, something around here, pretty decent time cycles and not perfect, but pretty tradable. Uh, the time cycles suggest here that we are in a declining phase um, that actually extends all the way here into 2025. So that would be um, some pretty substantial uh, downside. It is completely possible for the 10 year yield to do something like that and still be in a major bullish trend. You know, if it were to do something like this and form like a monster inverse head and shoulders pattern, then that would be super bullish for the 10 year yield long term. But, you know, to form that pattern, it could, you know, spend years uh, going down given the vast time horizon in front of us. Uh, we do see uh, pullback in development. Uh, looking at the wicks here, uh, you do see that the wick here for the week that uh, just passed was lower than the previous wicks. So even though we didn't close lower than the preceding weeks, there's something in the wicks here that suggests bearish activity, uh, a bit strongly bearish activity. The 200 day is a support level here. We did bounce from it. Uh, the green 50 day is a resistance level. Uh, so let's explore a bit further and go over here like uh, that and we get the TNX like that. Uh, so looking here at uh, the relationship between the two, uh, in blue here on the bottom you see that the TLT is abnormally underperforming uh, the 10 year yield. We usually don't have this uh, kind of relationship. Uh, looking at um, the RSI, the previous times we have explored the low end of RSI, uh, at least quite a few of those times we did actually go into a protracted period of TLT outperforming the TNX. And that is was also something that we got a hint at when we looked at the time cycles. When we go here to the daily data points, uh, you could make the case that like, this looks like a rounding bottom in development, which is a bullish pattern. And when we go to uh, the seasonality, it's very messy. The TLT overall usually underperforms uh, the 10 year yield into 17th of April. Looking at the seasonality, in February is a bit of a weak month. March is a bit of a mess. It can be very bullish, at least looking back to 2018, it can be super bullish or rather bearish. So March is messy. I will give the bulls a four here on relative uh, performance. So overall, we do get a two in favor of the bulls here. A key interest signal is the inverse head and shoulders pattern. There are also some other indicators in play, the 200 the daily moving average as resistance and the 20 day as support. Um, this is a very interesting situation for the TLT. It's pulled back very, very substantially. Uh, the 10 year yield had these very clean time cycles that suggested that there could be a more protracted period of the 10 year yield going down. So overall, the setup is uh, more bullish than bearish for the TLT. But I would say that the indicators we found on, you know, the technicals, they are very important. So if um, the bulls were to lose the 20 day moving average uh, on the TLT and the bears being able to protect the 200 daily moving average on the TNX, uh, then uh, that could turn uh, bearish for the TLT. We have some time left. Let's look at some of the old uh, about the older videos that I have uh, published. Um, I don't have the date in front of me here, but I did uh, a video on Palomar. It's in the Palomar. It's in the insurance business. I think it was disaster insurance. Okay, so this is um, 
Well, it, it sort of, it, I mean, the, it's not like the train has passed, but here you had a very good trade, uh, double bottom, a good entry opportunity. The bullish move is in development. That doesn't mean it is over, but it's just that uh, a great entry opportunity might have passed. Again, Palomar is it's interesting, but maybe it's not like a super entry opportunity now. I do prefer to have like a good entry opportunity. Uh, iRobot is also uh, a stock I have looked at. Uh, iRobot is pulling back, so uh, this was a big rally. Maybe it was earnings. Let's look a bit at the news. Uh, into, into fourth amendment to amended and restated credit agreement. Okay, it falls for seventh day spread widest since Amazon Biot announced. Okay. Uh, falling for the seventh day in a row, and it's now trading below where it did before Amazon announced deal to purchase the robot vacuum company. Um, so concern about antitrust issues with Amazon purchase, especially in US and UK. Uh, worried about Q3 results. Uh, so there's more. There's a request here to do a more in-depth review from the FT Federal Trade Commission. Um, okay. Amazon, so and the short interest here in our robot is at twenty two percent. Um, so th this is a situation though where if, well, this is potentially a bit of a win win though because if uh, the acquisition is well the buyout, uh, is, I'm not sure whether there is a difference here between acquisition uh, or buyout, but if it if the deal f comes through, then of course it's going to go back to uh, the big uh, gain you had here when it was traded closed at uh, oh, $59.5, which would be some decent upside from the current level. Let's measure the upside. Like um, that, that would be 40-ish um, yeah, percent upside. That would definitely be good. But given how far it has fallen now, it has fallen down to levels it were at before there was ever a deal uh, if you go back here, this was in 2020, this was way before any talk of that. And then from that period, it reached a high 400 and yeah, almost 400% above that low. And that was without any talk about Amazon. So this is, I think this is an interesting opportunity nonetheless. So if obviously the deal coming through bullish, but it's still, it's now at such a low level that even the risk of the deal failing wouldn't necessarily mean total crash. I mean, a lot of, I mean, it, the, 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 the chart is right here in front of us. Let's look at some additional data. Seasonality is bullish to the left. To the right, we have a 4% loss for February so far. Uh, looking at March, it's very messy month. If we look here to the left, we can see that March usually is very strong in the beginning, then it is weak into the end. So. Um, that's why I like to combine the table and uh, the average, uh, you know, the chart view to the left. Let's look at the fundamentals. Um, okay, so in terms of price to book ratio, it's at a decent price. Price to sales as well. Uh, price to sales of 94 is pretty, well, 0 0.94 is pretty good for like a high flying tech stock. Um, let's look at the price targets. Well, the forecasts, wow, that, that's not many. Only two analysts have a one year. Yeah, it could, yeah, but that could be because of the buyout. A lot of analysts just removed their, their price targets. Um, so the data here might be messy if they just dropped their targets because of the, the buyout. Because the price target here is very, very reflective of that buyout price. Okay. But yeah, overall, this is just a very interesting bullish opportunity here for iRobot. The long-term trends for robotics is, they are very strong. Uh, iRobot is a key uh, player in this uh, space. They have many different types of robots. And uh, they're some of the best performing robots out there. And uh, definitively, if they partner with Amazon, uh, there's pretty substantial upside. Uh, okay, we, well, which we found, you know, due to the, the the buyout price. And if the deal does not come through, 
if it fails, then there could be even more upside based on previous price for uh, iRobot. So yeah, overall interesting. So, yeah, we have looked at the TLT and we all even went into the robotics space. So things can really uh, escalate quickly. So, yeah, um, interesting times ahead. Uh, always have a market neutral portfolio. Use stop levels and um, let the trend be your friend.